Now that low p-value shows there is correlation between the aquarium and improved GPA, but we have to say no, the principal cannot conclude the aquarium is causing the improvement. There are lurking variables, and some could be confounding. For example, perhaps the one hour of extra slash forced study time is responsible for the GPA increase. We don't really know. We don't know if it's the aquarium or something else. All we know is this group of 20 students, GPAs increased. The principal should have assigned another group of students to act as the control. He could have got 20 students to do a one hour study period in a different room that didn't have an aquarium. If the principal did that and the only difference between the groups was the aquarium, we could actually say the improvement was caused by the aquarium. To perform a t-test, there's three conditions. The first is the random condition. Now, since the principal selected the 20 students using a simple random sample, this condition is met. And this is the most important condition. If the principal instead asked for volunteers to do the one hour study period, he might have ended up with very motivated students and the improvement in GPA would be a result of a biased sample. The next condition is the independent condition. And since the principal is sampling without replacement, we need to check the 10% condition. So as long as there's at least 200 students at this school, and most schools have at least 200 students, the 10% condition is met. But there's something else we need to check with independence. We have to assume that each of the students' GPAs are independent of each other. And if all these students are in the same room studying for an hour each day and possibly helping each other, their GPAs might not be independent. So this condition would not be met. This violation could affect the results. If the student's collaboration caused an increase in GPA for the entire group, that would have nothing to do with the aquarium and cause more problems in our conclusion. The last condition is the normal condition. Our sample size is only 20. That's too small for the central limit theorem to apply. So we need to make sure our sample doesn't have outliers or strong skewness. To do this, press the stat button and press enter. These are our list and we're gonna type the GPAs into list one. Now we can quickly check for outliers by making a modified box plot. Press second and then y equals. This is our stat plot menu and we're gonna press enter on plot one. We're gonna turn it on and for type, we're gonna choose modified box plot and we're gonna use list one and press zoom then nine. All right, right there we have an outlier. So we're in violation of the normal condition and we can't use T procedures. This affects our results because our p-value from part A, if t procedures were used, is invalid. It's the wrong p-value. So depending on what the true p-value is, our results might not be significant anymore. So we'll say there's an outlier in the GPAs, so we cannot use t procedures. This means our p-value from part A is not the correct p-value, and our results could change. Now we can't use T procedures, and if you're curious what procedures you could use, there's something called bootstrapping. If you like this video and want to learn more about significance tests, check out this playlist.